and a half and five seconds. The 2015 Moto2 European Championship is underway. Superb start down the right hand side already, and they're side by side down into the first corner. Vieje tips it in and does hold the lead from pole position. The two Pons riders are second and third. That's Marini and Pons. They're away clean. They've got holds your breath, but they all get through the second corner without troubles. It's good so far. Great start there for Pons. Marini had some trouble actually wheeling off the line game, not getting the power down. It's been very difficult so far this weekend to read into race pace because we've had a few rain showers. The weather's been very, very uh, strange, hasn't it? With a, a few showers and a few drops on the circuit. It's been difficult. And look at oh, that. Oh, yeah, coming up on the inside. It's no oh. control. He might run wide there, though. Yes, and he does. And Pons takes advantage of that. He was never going to get that bike stopped coming into that. To corner. The front wheel did lift off the oh. ground. There it goes. That's Pons over the crest down to turn nine. And look what's happened now. Vieja, after that huge moment, he's dropping into the clutches of Marini. But not just Marini, Odendahl and Medina are in there as well. And Odendahl making a great start. Obviously, not going to do a Marquez and try and get a position back too quickly and do something rash. Oh, and this time it's Marini who's struggling at the left-hander into the hip. And he's run wide. And Vieja then making the most of that error from the Italian. Remember, Marini on the second of these yellow bikes is Valentino Rossi's half-brother. He's won so many titles over in Italy the last few years. Keeps it on the island. Odendahl's closing as well. And they'll be able to get out there clear that up, there won't be any uh, major worry there then, luckily it didn't hit anybody. Look at the front then, Pons, 1.2 seconds now, Vieja yeah, still third, Marini, oh there's the debris, it's still on the, the track. track. And that is rather dangerous actually, if someone runs right, if you've got someone trying to overtake on the left-hander there, they, there is a chance they could hit that. It is just a piece of fairing, it looks like a rear seat unit that's come off. Yeah, thankfully it's off the racing line, but it's just on the outside there of turn six, so it's certainly not an ideal situation. Over the brow they go, so it's Marini on the Calyx, that's number 10, the 72 of Nagashima riding. Also dropped their way down this roller coaster part of the track to turn 12 into the fourth and final sector. The lap split up into four parts, just as it is in the World Championship. So we can track everybody's progress through these sectors, but fastest lap of the race last time round has gone to the leader of 47 3 big field positions. Just watch Granado biding his time, and I think he might see him come on strong in the next couple of laps and decide that it, he's time for him to make his move. And it will be half race distance halfway around this lap. And I was just about to say, because I'm looking at the timing screen, look at this. This is the battle for second place. Odendahl and the pole sitter Vieja, who ran out wide earlier, lost some ground. That was in one second, what, one lap ago. It's now down to only three tenths of a second. There's Edgar Pons in the lead. Is Odendahl experiencing problems once more? Have you given the compensator's curse? Please? Now in Portugal, and this is the battle ranging here with Vieja having now, well, I say it's a battle, he's getting away now. Yeah. Vieja's pulled away from Steve Odendahl. Still a strong second and third places, but can he do anything about the leader? It's a 4.5 second gap ahead to Edgar Pons. You can't even see him in that shot. He's already down the hill at around turn 12. He's long gone. This meantime is the battle going on. Uh, in fact, at the top of the screen as well, Marini still under as well. And uh, as it's being shown here in the commentary box on the screen, 50% of this race is now completed. Uh, actual 50% would be eight and a half laps, so they round that up. So end of lap through on the inside. Great battle going on here for sixth and seventh positions. Will Marini be able to respond? Don't forget, Marini fell and he has responded, but he crashed at this very next corner, turn five in the Moto3 race last year. Marini seems to have so much more power than Tessa on the straight. He can power past him, but look at that. Tessa straight away inside the hairpin, takes the right line. Marini ran slightly. Battle going on down actually four with Petty and just behind him with Ramdan and Rossley for 15th, 16th, all the way down to the 21st rider. There's only a couple of seconds separating them. Look at this. This is the battle for second. Odendahl has fought back. He's just sat behind Vieja. Oh, and then he touched down into turn one. Remarkable stuff. Odendahl's fought back, got in the draft of Vieja down the start, finished straight. And with only a handful of laps to go here now at Portimao, the battle is really on for second place. Eight seconds ahead. Sounds in the championship. On to the final lap of the race, and then the battle for second is still going on. Vieja has passed Odendahl, springing a surprise in the last few moments of this race. Can the South African respond? Now, this could be very interesting as we come on to the last lap, because I think this is where we see a lot in the motor. You can say that Pons will be very confident after race one, and his team will be very happy, especially seeing Marini having come back from <laughs> you know, a, a situation that didn't look great at one point. And the last corner it comes, and it's going to be a second victory at Portimao, a third in the CV, and the first victory of the 2015 FIM CV Repsol Moto2 European Championship season for Edgar Pons. Who's won the battle for second place? Vieja is ahead of Odendali, the second lead, despite slowing down in the final stages of the race. That was dominance with a capital D. Now Edgar Pons, what a superb and dominant start to the season it was for Pons. Great stuff then from Vieja, ahead of his 18th birthday on Thursday. Finishes second, a Luke's word there as well from Granada, who finishes fourth. 
And Luca Marini, we'll have to speak to him about that later. <laughs> I don't quite know what went on. He was obviously controlling the tyre sits. TV for him, Chavez Vieja second. So two Spaniards up there in the top three. Odendar for South Africa completing that third place. And now the Frigine is being sprayed up there. The Kappa on the podium. Of course, not all of the riders, particularly in motor.